Hello and welcome to another episode of Captain's Dry Dog where it's a really cool episode, forgive the pun, it's about cooling down the air compressor. Now an air compressor is exactly that, it compresses air and it's for those who've got an airbrush and if you've got an airbrush you know it's really annoying sometimes that when you've got a compressor like this one it overheats. Now this I do highly recommend. It's a mini air compressor. You can get it on Amazon, eBay, model making shops. It's around about 50 to 60 pounds. And I think the later ones do come with a modification of a fan at the back. However, I don't know how good that is, but you know, as well as I do, this thing heats up so badly that just by touching it will hurt you. That's how hot it can get. Uh, I would say five to 10 minutes use you can get from this before you have to stop it, switch it off, walk away, have a cup of tea, come back, make sure it's cooled down and then start back on your project. And this annoyed me so much so last week, I thought to myself, come on, there's got to be an easy solution for this. And there is, two PC fans, that's all it takes. And I would say it cost me 10 pounds to make this modification, but you can do it for cheaper. Uh, if you just got a cheaper brand PC fan and uh, just a bit of wire, in fact, you don't really need to have specialized tools. In this episode, I used a soldering iron and a hot glue gun, but you don't even need to have those. In fact, just a little bit of time, I think it took me 45 minutes to do, and a little bit of effort. And that's it, you'll never have that problem again with overheating. In fact, I've already uh, tested it out after 20 to 30 minutes with the compressor on and also the fans on at the same time, it ran sweetly. So if you wanna know how to make this modification, let's get cracking. Using PC fans to cool the compressor is ideal, but can be really overwhelming to shop for, as there's just so many different brands and sizes out there to choose from. So starting off with the size, I found these to be a perfect fit for the compressor. I worked out that this compressor needs two of these because after five or 10 minutes use, the main body and the section where the piston is gets super hot. These fans come with helpful arrows to show which way the blades rotate and where the air blows out from. The direction of the airflow is really important to get right so to call the unit efficiently. By chance, the 80mm fans not only are a perfect size for this mass-produced compressor, but by coincidence also had the same mounting points to screw it directly onto the compressor's body. However, the fan does need a slight modification by trimming the corner brackets. This is so it can fit the replacement longer screws, as these need to be long enough to go all the way through the fan and vent panel holes. Although the original screws would work if the vent panel was not used and just chucked away, it's best to just keep it as it covers the exposed power terminals inside. The second fan is hot glue gun to the top of the fins where the compressor gets really hot as well. These fans have three wires ending to a PC circuit board plug. This plug is not needed so can be cut off and chucked away. But now the positive and negative wires need to be identified. This can be done by trial and error using a 12 volt power supply. Then it's just a case of completely cutting off the redundant third wire and marking the remaining wires so we know what's positive from negative later on. Now the two fans can be joined together by connecting the wires, positive to positive and negative to negative. If you don't have a soldering iron, that's not a problem. These can be twisted together instead and taped up, which works just as well. So I'm currently learning how to use Fusion 360 and essentially I want to be able to make my own parts and get them 3D printed. Now what I'm working on here and I've included in the link down below that you can download and print yourself or get someone to print it for you is the housing for the on off toggle switch for the cooling system. Now you don't actually have to have that. In fact, you can actually make your own housing, but if you want to download it, 3D print it, put the parts in, it's all made to measure. So it's perfect for this setup. I added a hole to feed the wires into the box and then used a rubber grommet to secure them. This can also be done with just a dab of glue. Plugging and unplugging the power source to start and stop the fans isn't ideal and is really annoying. So adding a simple toggle switch is perfect and really easy to do. Only the metal legs need to be bent for it to fit snugly into its new housing. I made the lid for this toggle switch and it satisfyingly snaps precisely into the hole securely without any glue. 
To avoid snagging, it's good to tape down the loose wire leading from the piston fan as it will only accidentally get pulled out if you've stored it underneath your desk. Here aluminium tape is used as it will withstand the heat and just looks better than using gaffer tape or sellotape. This box is made to the same fan dimensions and fits nicely and securely with a little help from a hot glue gun. Using the negative wire, this goes via the toggle switch and this will allow the switch to break the circuit and cut the power whenever required. The last piece of the puzzle is adding the bow socket. As the one I designed for the box didn't arrive in time for filming, I adapted this random one I had knocking about in my drawer which after a test fitting is secured with a hot glue gun. And there we have it, a compressor that can now be used to paint an entire model without doing an impression of Chernobyl.